Okay. So, who'd like to start? Here we go. Uh, sir, you were first. Hi, my name is William. Um, from Australia, running a restaurant payment company. My question to you is, um, you mentioned before about token economy and you are building your company towards making that economy. Um, so w is there a proprietary value in that economic model that you've built? As in, it, so if someone published a white paper that says this is our economy and there's a certain specific way to do it now and achieve the ultimate token economy. Some lawyers that I've spoken to say, oh, I mean, you know, patent that or patent part of that. Is there any, uh, do, do you have any comments about, about that? That there's actually some sort of a protect, you know, protect worth, worthy uh, economic model or something? Um, I'm sure there is. I think it depends on the, the use case and the scenario. Um, you know, m my sense is that if you're going to do it, do it. If you fail, you fail, but don't do it half-heartedly. So if you're going to go in and say we're going to build this tech, this uh, token economy, go in trying to build it. And there's no like this is we're, like I said, we're early days. Where this is this is the birth of a whole new industry. So we don't have all the all the right answers, and we don't know how things will shape up. But I think it's 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 a dangerous thing to try and um, do it half half-heartedly. If that makes any sense. Like I don't have the, the I don't have the answer for you, but I can tell you that my, my gut feel is that you got to just go throw yourself into it and figure it out. Is there any merits to patenting, actually patenting your token economic model? <laughs> yeah, yes, I mean that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the idea of patents protecting your eco economic model uh, when a lot of the stuff is open source code where you can just fork it and create a whole new code and you can do it in a decentralized way. Who's going to enforce the, enforce it, right? It depends what you're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, this, I, I, I don't know. That's the answer. Like, I think it's worth trying, but there's no way that gives you an edge yeah, necessarily. It, it's expensive, so I, I would, I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> yeah. Great talk. Uh, I was just at the other. Thank the, you. the main stage, great, great listen to you. I love what you're doing with Civic. Uh, Robert, CEO of Databook, also a blockchain company. Um, I've always been curious about where you want to go with Civic. Do you want to stay in the identity space and just own the identity space? Or do you see in the future Civic going beyond identity into like other types of data? And is there is there like a, a 2.0 on top of identity? No, I think identity is like kind of the core of what we want to do. So wherever you can use it. So logging into websites, um, going through passport control, um, voting in an election. So you know, identity is the core, and these are the applications. So sure, we'll go up the stack to, to deal with applications of identity, but it's always going to be identity. We're not going to be doing uh, social media ads. That's not our business. Right. And like, so the, like the voting app, for example, yeah. is, that, is that something you want to partner with, like another blockchain company, to yeah. have them build that and you through the identity piece kind of thing? Yeah. We, we okay. don't see ourselves necessarily to being able to tackle Voting. If no one does it well, by the time we think the market's ready for it, we'll build our own. But if other people are doing it, we're happy to partner with them. Great, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so how's it going, guys? My name's Tyler, and um, in the next 40 days or so, my team and I are launching an ICO for our utility token uh, called Koinonia. It means uh, in Greek, brotherhood, whatnot, communion. And it's for our uh, game sharing platform, peer-to-peer uh, -peer game sharing, sharing physical games. And uh, just some questions for you. Um, I'm really curious as to how you, you establish credibility in such a um, cloudy space in terms of uh, selling your, your ICO and um, private equity to venture capitalists. And also, what's your ideal uh, tokenomic structure, I guess, for maximum returns to your token holders? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you, you establish credibility by doing things which don't always make financial sense. Um, and that's, I think, what we did. We could have raised a lot more money on our token sale. We had over $100 million in commits. We did. We capped it. We didn't increase the cap. Other people did. We um, distributed fairly between as, as fairly as we could between as many people as we could. We um, we just did a lot of things. We just did, we, sit, we we basically took the money out of the equation and we said, how do we uh, how do we do this the right way in the most fairest way to get. Uh, to achieve an ecosystem where there's just a lot of um, stakeholders in the ecosystem that want to help and build the build the ecosystem. 
So I think when you take your eye off the money, it helps a lot to establish credibility because you look at other companies that are just, you know, they're just money grabbing, you know, hey, if you can raise a billion dollars, let's do it. You know, like there's no real um, rationale for how money will be spent, et cetera, what, what is required. Um, yeah, and then in terms of, you know, your unique case, it is unique. Every single company is different. Um, that's why I've got, um, like, the, the, I'm a, I co-founder Newtown Partners, like we're doing token economy design for companies because each design is different for each company. It's not, it's not a, a, a one size fits all. Okay. Who is next? Who wants to ask a question? Let me see. Well, I have a question. May I sure. have a question? <laughs> well, the, within the ecosystem right now, there's so many ICOs. Mm -hmm. It's, a bit crazy, and there's mm -hmm. so many bot ICO chats too. Mm -hmm. So, how do you believe who and where? Like, where? Which are the? Um, I I don't know if I should say chat rooms or the sources in the internet or where you can find reliability. Um, that's a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are definitely a lot of scams out there right now. Um, I've always been in favor of investing in in entrepreneurs with track records. Um, so it's not easier being in Silicon Valley because you get access to all the deals of people who've done this before, they've had exits, they've built companies, they're legitimate, uh, and that's kind of where I've been focusing if I do any investments in people I know or through the network I know. Um, I don't do random stuff where I don't know who the people are. Um, and within the coins that are actually being, let's say, um, building a reliable reputation, which ones do you think are the ones that are going to stay after? You know, so a lot of people say there's a bubble. So if the bubble blows, who do you think is going to say? Now, I'm not saying everybody invest in that after because we don't know. <laughs> but, you know, how, who uh, do you think I, is going to stay? I, I've been very excited about um, decentralized exchanges. Um, but there's a lot of players in that market. So it's hard to say who's going to be the winner. But I think there will be a winner that has a decentralized exchange um, um, protocol or token. So you look at uh, uh, there's a couple of players like ZRX and one of them. But you know what the token economics are. I'm not so sure that they necessarily make financial sense to buyers. So you could look, you could see a decentralized exchange taking off and being highly used. But if the token economics don't make sense, uh, it doesn't mean the price of the token necessarily go up. Right. So let's not correlate price with um, functionality and features, and uh, and you know, it's 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 not always there's no there's not always causation. So just because something is popular doesn't mean the price is going to go up necessarily. It may in the short term, but it, yeah. Okay, we have a question. Yay. Uh, it's about cryptocurrency. So do you think, in your personal opinion, uh, Bitcoin will, or Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies will ever reach stability uh, that, that, that can be used as a mass, um, as a proper form of uh, uh, medium of exchange? And if so, what will need to happen for that stability to happen, you know, to, to arrive? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it gets to that point. I think Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin versus the others, um, everyone's chasing after different market segments. Bitcoin Cash wants to become a medium of exchange. Uh, Bitcoin wants to be a store of value. Uh, Monero and Zcash wants to be anonymous payments. Um, you know, they all have different markets and different levels of market penetration. The volatility is there because we're still early stages right now. I mean, there is a very good chance that one or both Bitcoins become worth a million dollars plus uh, in the future. Uh, it just depends how it plays out. And I think we get to that level of value, it becomes very stable. Uh, but right now, it's just very volatile. I mean, Bitcoin has been 20,000 and 5,000 in the same 30 days or what, you know, same 60 days. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of uh, not much of a store of value, in my opinion. <laughs> when you have that sort of volatility. I'll give the lady the first if that's okay. Thank you. Um, so my name is Eliza, and I'm partnered here with Robert. And I had a question about, are there certain types of companies that you're trying to partner with right now or that you're focused on partnering with? Um, and you mm -hmm. just take it from there. We're just focusing on the crypto economy. So you know, exchanges, wallets, um, ICOs, anyone doing crypto. Because we have, I think we're probably one of the biggest user bases, uh, people don't realize this, of crypto users uh, from all the ICOs we've done and as well as our own. 
um, and it just continues to grow. And so the people who have got the IDs verified by Civic don't need to do it again, so it makes it really easy. And if we keep doing, you know, if we did, let's say, 50 or 100 this year, the each incremental one has fewer and fewer users, new users signing up for us, but it makes it easier for all the others just to go and, and get processed and do it quickly. There you go. Yeah, so, um, so in regards to a lot of the, the coins out there, I guess, without any utility value um, that are using ICOs purely as a means of circumventing the traditional um, fundraising process, uh, do you think philosophically that's a bad thing for the crypto economy, even if their uh, tokenomics makes sense to um, token holders? Uh, I don't know how they do both at the same time. Ha, ha, I mean, gotcha, if, okay. <laughs> if, if, if the tokenomics were good, it wouldn't be bad for the for the economy. So. Sure, I guess my question was like, if, if the coin itself has no um, relevance to the business, let's say the blockchain behind it, the decentralized nature, or the anonymity behind it has no really relevance to the industry it's trying to include blockchain technology into. Yet the tokenomics look good, the scarcity, all of those those factors make sense for the, the coin holders. Should they do it? I guess is my question. Um, I, I, I need a lot more detail before I give you an answer on that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> OK, we have a question there in the back. Um, how do you see? I think one of the things, you know, I've been into cryptocurrencies for a while now, um, and I'm in tech, and I feel like a lot of us in Silicon Valley underestimate how uh, simple or easy it is for us to understand really basic things like uh, secure passwords, so using a different password or using a password manager, like a lot of basic things. Like before I would tell any of my friends who live what I would call in regular America, um, to start signing up for exchanges, to start getting involved with cryptocurrencies, I feel like I have to teach them about things like secure password management, secure security practices. Like, uh, how do you see Civic taking crypto mainstream? Because security is a big concern, and the average person or the average American, the average world person doesn't even really have the security practices, I think, to where I would fundamentally say, like, yes, you should be signing up for exchanges, you should be buying things if their email account really isn't even that secure. They use the same password on, you know, signing up for some blog that they do to their Gmail account. Um, you know, how can Civic really, uh, do, you, do you see Civic playing into that ecosystem in a way that, they, that you could smartly control their wallets or passwords or something? Or yeah, I think uh, the long-term vision is that you don't use user and passwords to access websites. You use private keys. Keys are stored on your device, in your Civic, uh, Civic app, and that's how you access um, everything in the future. Um, so we want to get to the point where it's private key-based, not username and password-based. I want to jump at one here. Um, you tweeted once that uh, there may be one day be a time when a political party ICOs and then goes to uh, whatever house uh, is uh, existing at that time. Um, what might that look like? What's the sort of uh, intellectual um, expression of that? Yeah, so I think it's something along the lines where you, you do an ICO, you offer it to as many people as possible. So let's say, for example, you want to create a political party and you said, look, um, based upon your contributions, you cap out at, let's say, $1,000 or $10,000 per person, which would get you 10,000 votes. The minimum votes would be 1,000, which everybody gets, et cetera. But you could buy disproportionately more votes, but not in the running of the country, necessarily, or, or whatever, but the running of the party. So what are the values of the party, et cetera. And, people, and you basically have this decentralized democratic system where the people who, as you contribute every year to the political entity that you're in, you have some sort of say over what, uh, the values are, and if you don't like it, you can leave, etc. But it's, I, I think it's an interesting thought experiment. Like, would people pay to be more uh, activist in, in, in their own political parties? Everything costs money, even politics. <laughs> Hi, w what do you think about upcoming ICO of uh, Telegram? And do you plan to build identity on top of that platform? Uh, we're not building identity on top of Telegram. <laughs> and I personally am not participating in Telegram, so that's about most I can say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
We good? We good. Okay, thank you everyone for this very, very Thanks, enlightening everyone. conversation. Thank you so much.